Yep. Good? You guys, I guess, blitzed more Saturday night than in the previous couple of months. Had some success doing that with Wake. But your blitz numbers appear to have picked up in the recent games leading into that. You've had more success with it. Is, is, can you tell us why you're blitzing a little bit more and what you need to get from your guys in order to have more confidence in the blitzing? Mm -hmm. uh, that was by design for this game, for sure. Uh, obviously, to you know, try to keep them off rhythm. You know, when when Wake had struggled um, in the past game, it was usually because of people were bringing a lot of pressure. Uh, Sam Hartman is just a great quarterback, so if you're not getting that type of pressure, um, it's it can be a long night. So that was by design. I felt like we got more pressure, even though you know, in this, if you look at the sack, the stats, um, there's going to say there was one. But that's because they throw the ball so close to the line of scrimmage where we actually did get some sacks, but it was probably right at the line of scrimmage, right? So the pressuring was by design, and we're going to have to do some more of that. And, and again, we've got to help our coverage in the back end. And so, uh, you know, it'll be different by game plan. It's not just, you know, just going every game and say, oh, boy, this is what we're going to do all, you know, all day long. But in that particular game, for us to be able to, you know, uh, get some and create some negative plays, get them behind the chains. Some um, uh, that's what we had to do. So that's that was the whole game plan Saturday night. How much does the I don't want to say trust, but the ability of the guys in the back end to cover play into how uh, it, it definitely plays a, a part. And you know, we do our best to make sure that we don't leave them by themselves um, a lot. Uh, but inevitably, you know, that's the job of a defensive back, right? Sometimes you're on islands by yourself and you have to cover. Um, obviously, you don't want to do that all day, every day uh, to any secondary. But uh, there's got to be a balance in there between when you're aggressive and when they have to hold up in coverage. And sometimes you can be aggressive and, you know, not necessarily leave those guys on islands by themselves either. So we were able to do a little bit of both Saturday night. Uh, but that definitely comes to comes into play as part of the equation on how much you pressure. Going into last week, it was sort of piecemeal with the defensive front with the guys out. How do you think that, that group fared against Wake? I feel like, you know, we uh, I feel like we played well at times. Uh, I feel like um, our rotation was what we needed to do and, and how we needed to rotate it. Um, we'll have to look at that every week moving forward on exactly what that looks like. Uh, but, you know, for the most part, I felt like it was, it was good. Uh, we got some pressure, um, some guys that, you know, came in Rucker had a really, really good football game, I feel like. Uh, and some of our inside guys played well too. So, um, but we're going to have to look at that every week on, you know, what, what you know, offensively, what are we seeing? Uh, what's our main priority to stop? Obviously, you can say, well, you know, stopping the run, stopping the pass, you got to stop them both. But some people are not equally good at both, so you got to take away what they do best. Uh, but moving forward, we're going to have to address that every week. Notice in the fourth quarter, you took out Grimes and Kelly and put in Hardy and Cavazos, which in, in like for non dime package. What goes in that decision? Is that you making the call? Is that Coach Warren on the field? They play some significant snaps in the yes, so we, we're always talking through that. We're always talking about it, talking through it. And um, a lot of different things go into play. Uh, sometimes it's number of plays being played. How long is the drive? Do we feel like guys are getting winded? Um, you know, so it's not always just one, you know, entity on why we switch out. But we're always in contact with, all right, who are we going in with this series? You know, are we going to make a change right now? What are we, what are we doing in terms of uh, – you know, uh, package-wise, uh, you know, where are we in the package? You know, if it's a nickel, where we're typically in that a lot. Um, you know, uh, when we're in that a lot, then, you know, it does come into play how many snaps have they been out there and things of that nature. And uh, Ken Kelly, obviously huge interception. It seems like he's, you know, he gets, uh, I don't want to say this, but like bashed online for missing tackles, for being out of, out of position. He's that kind of an up and down season, but the cone with the huge exception was obviously a crucial moment. Yeah, it, 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 was, it was very timely for Cam. There's no question about it. Um, and, and Cam's played some really, really good games. Uh, I think Cam's been inconsistent. Uh, he's not the only one, but uh, 
you know, there's times when he's played really, really well. There's times when we would like to see him play more consistent, whether that's in coverage, uh, open field tackling. Uh, but a critical time in that game, that was a game changer. And uh, he did a great job of reading the quarterback's eyes and cutting in front of the ball. So, um, you know, like everybody on our defense, you know, uh, he's had some really, really good, you know, moments. And again, that was as big as we've had all year. Uh, and then there's some things that we got to continue to work on and improve as well. How about his ability, Gene, just to follow up on that, but Ross has to, to not let some, you know, he got burned on a couple balls over the top. And I know the slow mesh, I'm sure, is a problem, but like, this ability not to just like check out mentally and be like, oh, you know, I think he was on the sideline saying like, this is still my game or something like that. Like, what, does that take this a special a, a personality or mentality to be able to flush it and keep keep going? That's the job description. When you play back there, that's what you sign up for, right? And you know, the hardest thing for a secondary guy is that if you get beat uh, and everybody sees it it's always assumed it's your fault. And that's not necessarily the case, right? There was always something else that may or may not have happened, right? Now, sometimes, you know, it's, it's glaring, but that's the life of a DB. And you can't live that same play twice. You can't let a play beat you twice. So uh, if we have anybody back there that gets affected by getting beat, and then all of a sudden they go back out there and play scared, um, you know, they're, they're, not, they're not gonna be out there. You know, so you have to you have to move on fast. You know, you have to move on when you make a great play, and you have to move on when you, you when you don't make a great play. You know, so that's the life of a DB. So to answer your question, no, I fully expect Cam to go back, regroup this week with whatever he wasn't you know good at, and improve. Just like everybody on our defense, the difference is the defensive tackle screws up as much as a DB, and nobody ever knows it, right? Because there's ten guy or seven guys behind him. So. Uh, just a different life that they live, um, and they have to, you know, you have to deal with the good and the bad, and I think our guys do that pretty well. How do you coach the, quote, I discipline that we talk about every week with guys like Cam Kelly and those other guys out there? How, mm -hmm. how is that coached? How do you how is get it? that across those guys? Well, you know, again, there's no rock, there's no science to it, right? I think the biggest um, – the biggest negative for a DB is to do nothing but stare in the backfield because there's so many things happening right now with their coverages, um, with where their eyes are supposed to be. Um, you know, you, you all, we always talk to these guys about action to coverage, meaning there's, a, there's always an action and we see that action and then our eyes always have to get to our coverage. So, uh, and then there's some coverages where our eyes are literally just on our coverage. And it's different. Safety's eyes are a lot of times different than corner's eyes. Corner's eyes are different than linebacker's eyes, right? And as you get closer down to the defense, everybody's eyes become more centrally located on something. So, for example, a defensive tackle is going to look at the man right in front of him, right? You're not going to fight Mike Tyson looking over here. And that's what you got in front of you, right? So, but everything is about eye discipline and everything is about, you know, what is the coverage? What does the defense ask you to do? Uh, and there's no rocket science to it. You're either doing it or you're not doing it. And if you're not doing it enough, then you're not going to be playing. Um, but, you know, in general, uh, if you are a disciplined defense and you're a disciplined player, then you have great eye control. And if you don't, you don't. So we coach it. We talk about it every day. We coach it off of film. And, um, you know, the players got to execute it. Gene, what would you say makes uh, Cayman Rutgers so effective? seems like, you know, you could look at him being undersized and a lot of things, reasons why he shouldn't be as good as he is, but he always seems to make plays. Yeah, he, he is. He's a, he's, he's a football, he's a natural football player, first of all. Um, he gets the game. He plays with great leverage and power. Uh, his practice habits are outstanding. I mean, he is practicing as hard as he can go every single day, and it carries over in the game. But he's a powerful guy, and uh, he's uh, – He's got really, really good suddenness, really good short area quickness, which makes him, you know, uh, be able to take on blocks and really be, you know, stout and, and hold the point in the run game. Uh, and then uh, in the pass game, because of his, you know, he's not a 6'4", real long guy, you know, he's a 6'2 guy uh, and maybe a little taller, but, uh, but just really powerful. So he strikes blocks and he gets under people's pads 
and you know he can he can use his his uh, his leverage and, and his low gravity or low center of gravity right now to really really work those offensive tackles who are six six as well. So, and it's a knack. He's got a knack for it. He just knows how to do it. He knows how to manipulate uh, blockers in, in pass rush. So even when he's not getting a sack, you can you'll see him a lot getting a lot of pressure, and he's you know he's backing tackles up into the quarterback's lap, which makes them nervous. So, uh, but he definitely has a knack and a trait. Uh, some you can coach, and some you can't. Meaning that he does have a natural ability just to you know he understands leverage and power. Uh, and he, he's just a he's a really good football player. Along similar lines, Gene, I was, I was I agree with you. I'm just looking at the numbers here again. I, I felt that you guys had way more like pressures and quarterback hurries and everything. But um, Javari Ritzy, like for whatever he is, 290 pounds. Like is he maybe surprising as a pass rusher? It seems like when he bounces out to end, sometimes you see him flying in there. You know, you know, like is he is he a better pass rusher than maybe? You would expect for a guy who, I guess, technically is an interior line right. or, you know, plays there. Like, well, that's the beauty of a guy like Ritzy because he's very athletic. He is 290 plus pounds, and for us to be able to move him outside, first of all, is is um, it's a unicorn. They're just it's really hard to get big guys out there on the edge, uh, and he's able to do that well. He definitely has some twitch to him, so he he can rush the passer from out there. Um, the luxury with him is there's probably not a place on the interior four units or four positions on, on the defensive line he couldn't play. He could play nose, he could play three, he could play power in. Probably move him out to jack if I wanted to teach him how to you know, do some things in coverage. But uh, just a very big athletic body and really smart. And it, it takes a lot to be able to learn all of those positions because uh, there's a lot that goes into that. But uh, he's just one of those guys that athletically he's very gifted. Um, he understands leverage. He knows how to rush the passer. And, um, you know, we're lucky to be able to have the flexibility of a guy like him that can go in and out because uh, that doesn't happen everywhere with guys that are 6'4", you know, 290. Gene, you're uh, two for three on the ACC championship game appearances during your time at Carolina. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on that? It's pretty good percentage there. <laughs> Yeah, I'll take it. Um, no, I, I'm excited that we that we're in a, in a position like this. Um, it's been uh, it's been a, it's been a very interesting and fun ride for sure. Um, you know, I think uh, again, like everything, as we as we warn the players, right? Like we're all excited about this, and it's it's a it's a really good accomplishment. But we're, there's there's so much in front of us that we can't really look to that. We have to really look to the you know to the game that we have this week and then the game that we have next week and then and then we'll finally get to that. But it's really good to be, you know, uh, to have clinched that spot this early. And now we got to play like we, we deserve it. And, um, you know, but it's been fun for me. I mean, obviously 2015 was, you know, the last time we were there and, and it was great to be a part of that. And uh, it'll, be, it'll be fun again. Also, let me get your opinion on, on Drake May. You've gone against a lot of quarterbacks. You've coached a Heisman candidate in Cam Newton. Uh, what, have you, what have you been impressed about with, with Drake? I'm going to say I've probably had five first-rounders on my team before. In my career, I've had five first-round quarterbacks on the same team that I coached, whether I was an assistant or a head coach. Uh, and some really good ones that weren't. Colt McCoy, I think, was a second-round or third-round, but a great quarterback. Anyway, I've been around a lot of great college quarterbacks. Um, Drake May is special. He is, he's special. He's got, I mean, Phil does a great job coaching him. The scheme is great with him. He's got things you can't teach. And I've been around the ones that are probably some, considered some of the greatest in college football history. And they had those same things. They had the things you couldn't teach. They had an innate ability to, you know, see the field. Um, the innate ability to skate things and make extend plays. Um, you know, great quarterbacks are great decision makers and they have great accuracy. Now you can guru everything up about all the things that are make up, you know, make up a great quarterback. If they can make great decisions and they got great accuracy, um, they're, they, they got a chance to be really, really special. And he's got all of that. And it's really amazing at, at a, as a young guy 
the skill set and the traits that he has, and we go against it every day in practice. Um, but he reminds me a lot of the, the other great ones I've been around, and he's uh, he's special. Did you get a chance to watch another game, or are you are you game not game? really? I mean, I don't. You know, I, I mean, I I look up and I see some things, but trust me, I have my own battles to fight <laughs> during those games. You know, I, I'll watch him when the season ends. Kate Mac was telling us that uh, you know he was. He was Saying like last year, you try to go over to the defense and stir them up is what he said. But with with like a Cedric Gray and a Power Apples, that the the leadership just happens with those guys. And he said he was, he was like, you know, I know they're gonna practice hard in the morning and play hard on Saturdays. I know that. Like what, when you have those guys displaying like the leadership type of thing, the intent, the innate things like you're you're saying, like mm-hmm. how do you approach that as a coach who's in charge of? You just let them go, or I mean, do you guide that, do you nurture it, do you listen to what they're saying and, mm-hmm. and, and, and grade what they're saying to their guys? Like, just how do you approach that when you have guys like that who, who seem to be such natural leaders? Right. And people are listening to them. They are, and it's uh, first of all, it's it's a luxury because it doesn't happen everywhere. It's really rare to have one. I mean, not really rare. It's it's common to have usually one. But to have two or more, um, you just use power said as the example, um, two guys with a great voice. Um, but what they not only is it what they verbally say and do, it's what people watch them do in practice, how they prepare off, you know, off the field, in the meeting rooms, spending extra time to, to come over and, and, and do football because they love it. Um, it's, it's great to have those type of leaders and they're rare. And so when things aren't going well for us, these guys are a calming force in that. Now, part of it, they've grown. I feel like they've grown over the year. Uh, and I think that, you know, in the off season and some things that Coach Brown and, and some of the guys staff-wise have done to, you know, uh, nurture leadership. And we talk to them about it all the time. And we are constantly in defensive meetings talking about what it looks like um, to lead, what it looks like to you know move forward when things aren't good, all of those things. Had the same conversations yesterday, again. Um, but it's really good because every single week when things are getting hairy, we've been in a lot of close games, a lot of close games, more so than we would like to be in. But obviously we've pulled out a lot of them. And we pulled a lot of them out when it hadn't looked good at all. Uh, and we've been able to do that. You can't do that without the leadership that, that you see and that you hear about, and it's real. So going over and you know, having to stir them up on the sidelines or, or whatever um, you know, the conversation was, um, not, they, don't, they don't really need that. They've got the leadership. Um, they, don't, they don't ever panic. They don't ever panic. Um, they know when it's good. They know when it's bad. Uh, but more importantly, they know when and how to fix it. Uh, and, you know, it's been a pretty opportunistic defense. I mean, the fourth quarter, you know, we didn't give up a point. And somehow or another, we were able to, you know, close out three straight drives. Wasn't always pretty, um, but we're looking for results, you know. And, um, and so, but again, all of that comes down to being able to have young guys that, that are mature, they lead, um, they don't panic. Uh, and. The two guys were set in power. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know that I've been around two that have been better at it. Gene, when looking at Georgia Tech's offense, obviously very different from the last time you were here when they ran the triple option. But what, what are some of the major talking points uh, that you're going to use with the defense this week with regards to that? Well, again, the, you know, Georgia Tech, before their quarterback got hurt, they had some really, really good wins. This is still a very good football team. They still got very good players. Um, obviously, the question is who's going to be quarterback. Uh, we don't really know that yet, um, but it's productive. Um, they got, you know, they, they throw the ball well and they and they run the ball well. Uh, it's just a matter of you know who's going to be a quarterback and you know what are they going to what are they going to do and how to you know how are they going to attack us? We don't know that because every week they have a different plan on how they go about trying to attack defenses. Uh, so a lot of it's going to be us lining up and saying, "All right, let's see what their let's see what their idea is this week, and let's see what, who their quarterback is." You know, Sims plays. That's a lot. That's a that's a 
very different offense right now in terms of what you have to do to defend it and stop it. Uh, so um, you know we got to see we got to see what uh, what they come out in. But got some really good tall, big, athletic receivers. Got some really good running backs. Uh, got some good tight ends. So um, it's business as usual, and it's never really about them anyway. It's really about us. Um, so the the message won't change yet. Yes, sir. Awesome, guys. Thanks, Thank you. Appreciate it.